Hi everybody, this is Willie at NewandLastCrafts.com and uh, came across a nice kerosene heater at a garage sale just a month ago or so. Problem is it needs a new wick and so I'm going to show you how to replace the wick in these things. Alright, so that's a better filming angle, uh, hopefully. So we're going to remove all these screws. Alright, here's all of our screws. Okay, and with that done, we should be able to go ahead and pull this whole top side off. And set it aside. And we get to our, uh, our business end here. Now that we have uh, you know, the wick exposed, I'll show you. You can see that. The wick coming up is an old, nasty, crunchy wick that we're going to replace. It says what we're getting after, but to get to it, you're going to take the ring off, and usually the knob has to come off, and this will flip over. Oh, yeah, and this one is connected to the gas opening. I'm going to leave that there because I, I We'll just put it back. So, if I need to take that off later, we'll do it. But uh, that's it for now. So, you might have to take the knob off to get the, the ring off to get to the assembly. I'll try to re angle this so you can see it. There's some wing nuts, nuts to the assembly down here that we're going to have to loosen and get off of there. And I may need to get a different tool out. To get these loose. Alright, I got that one by finger. But go ahead and, and get those loose. Uh, this one really has an unfortunate one back way back behind here. Um, that's okay, we'll figure it out. Uh, um, a little ingenuity. Not that big a deal. Got my little needle noses out just to break these loose. Okay, and with that. I'm hoping this will lift out. We'll be able to see our wick and what all needs to be replaced. Alright, so. We'll move this over. We're kind of done with this until we come back and put the new wick in. So here's your old wick. Um, you know, with kerosene and diesel, um, you want to look for evidence of, of bacteria growth because uh, bacteria can grow um, on these things. But we're looking really good here. And it really doesn't matter. We're going to be replacing it, but. If you saw evidence of that, you may want to really clean out your reservoir. Um, but in this place, we're just going to replace the well, in, in this one, it's interesting. Um, some of them have an inner sleeve that kind of holds the wig in place. This one doesn't. It just has some fingers. So it's really just pulling it out. And you can see, you know, it just has some splines on the inside that hold that guy in place. But, uh, yeah, here's our, our old wick that we're going to replace, and I'll show you a picture of the new one here. Alright, so we got our replacement wick here. 
also comes with the, some instructions. And we'll compare these guys so you can see what the difference is. Alright. I'll give you a great link to uh, where to get these wicks from. Um, you can see the difference already. So, yeah, this one's pretty worn out, so we're going to be a lot better off with the new wick. Alright, y'all, so here's our brand new wick. And we need to replace this one to see the, you know, the nice new head to it. And you want to pay attention to this line. So we're going to insert this, and we're going to stay even with the bottom of the wick holder. And make sure the whole thing's collapsed with the, your quick release. Okay. Stay even with that line on the bottom of the wick. And just gradually work your way around. Take your time. Get it pokeyed in there. Pretty easy. I think we're pretty good to go there. Alright, that's what it'll look like on the inside. Again, make sure you're dropped all the way down. And to show you when this thing is ratcheted up, it's hard to do right now, but that'll expose your wick and we'll be good to go. So, next thing we're going to do is get this back on to our source of kerosene. So just fit the little wick sweater over it. Make sure you got all sides and go ahead and push it down. Don't force it. Let it get down by itself. Go ahead and match up where your wing nuts are going to go again. And again I'll show you when this is cranked up. We should have a nice I don't know, maybe a half inch of wick or so exposed, and it may have to burn a little bit, but then you hit it and it'll pop back down. So, that's good. I'm going to install the wing nuts now. You know, the hardest thing in my experience so far is these wing nuts. You have to get a little creative. Um, how to get them tightened down, but um, I'm getting it. It's the last one. And we'll be able to put the rest of this back together and test her out. Another interesting thing you can do while you have it in this state is if your unit has an auto starter, you can kind of see what that thing does. Don't raise the wick if you do this. I mean, you don't want the thing to light on you when you're in this stage. Um, so you can kind of see how it's operating, if it's smooth, and if you need to work on that at all. Most of the time I don't really care about those, because they, well, for me the batteries wear out and I light them manually anyway, so I don't worry about that a lot. So now we're going to put the cover, or the, the ring, back around. Oh, yeah, so we can take the handle off. Put this guy back around. Okay. And now we can put this guy back on. Alright, looking good. Now we're going to put this guy back on. Yeah, so when you're looking up inside this, is another thing to, to check while you're inspecting this guy. There's not a lot that goes wrong with this, um, but this is just a heat baffle. Keeps things safe, but you want to make sure the little springy guy is lined up before you put it back on, otherwise you're going to have to take it back off again. But yeah, this is a heat baffle, and you know your starter um, will push this up. Um, yeah.
Yeah, just make sure that guy's lined up. Everything seems to be fitting. And go ahead and install your screws around the outside. And light it up and make sure everything's working okay. Okay. The lid is back on, and uh, I think we're ready to test this guy out. Let's set it on the garage floor here. Alright, sitting right next to its uh, brethren. So let's see if we can uh, give this guy a light and have a flame for a few minutes. I, uh, I know one of the huge issues with this guy is Somebody didn't install the wick quite right last time, so it wouldn't turn off. So I'm really confident we have that fixed now. So let's see how we do. Have my trusty aiming flame. In case the auto start doesn't work, let's give it a shot. These uh, old kerosene heaters, not really old, but uh, really reliable. Hardest thing you have to do is replace the wick. So hopefully this helps people out there. Um, and again, I'll put a link to where to buy the wicks. They're pretty cheap. Have a few on hand. And let's see if this guy lights up and has a nice solid uh, flame like this guy over here in a few minutes. Just a note, so it's a new wick. Um, just added a little bit more kerosene to make sure that we're uh, looking good as far as this thing burning and getting you know broken. Um, if you're flickering and kind of bouncing around like our guy on the right is that we just replaced the wake in, um, yeah but you, you don't want to have it inside or in you know a area that's not well ventilated at all. Uh, we're in my garage, both garage doors are open um, you see the guy on the left, a very steady flame. Maybe you can tell that in the video, maybe you can't, but once you get to that level, <clears throat> you still want to have ventilation if you're going to use these guys inside. Um, but that's what you want, a nice steady flame. Uh, light them and extinguish them outside of the home. Bring them in only when it's nice and stable. and you won't have too much of an issue, just make sure you have a CO detector. Yeah, so what we're looking for is a nice stable flame. It's still bouncing a little bit here. It stabilizes every once in a while, but I think we're going to be probably better off to go ahead and shut this guy down, which uh, let's make sure that works. Like I said, I had trouble with this one before not shutting it off completely. I think the problem last time is. Uh, Somebody didn't install the last wick quite correctly, it was installed too high. So let's see how this does overnight and uh, otherwise that's how to install a new wick on a uh, kerosene heater. This is Willie at NewandLostCrafts.com. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, if I can help at all, uh, please let me know. 
Well, then take care. Bye. Hi everybody, this is Willie at NewInLastCrafts.com and uh, came across a nice kerosene heater at a garage sale just a month ago or so. Problem is it needs a new wick and so I'm going to show you how to replace the wick in these things. Alright, so that's a better filming angle, uh, hopefully. So we're going to remove all these screws. Alright, there's all of our screws. Okay, and with that done, we should be able to go ahead and pull this whole top side off. And set it aside. And we get to our, uh, our business end here. Now that we have uh, you know, the wick exposed, I'll show you. You can see that. The wick coming up is a little nasty. 